there. But there he also healed on the occasion of this chapter. And the power to heal is in the power of prayer. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, it was essential, it was necessary, it was paramount that Jesus would engage himself in prayer on this particular occasion. When you study the life and ministry of Christ, prayer always preceded his critical point. Oh, yeah. Jesus was a praying man. Amen. Jesus, Jesus did not wait until occasions came upon him. But he was consistent. He was constant in prayer. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35 tells us on one occasion that Jesus got up early in the morning, a great while before day, and went out into a solitary place, and there he prayed. I like that, early in the morning, before the dew settled on the road, early in the morning, before the birds began to sing the answer of a reading melody in the treetop. Early in the morning, before the darkness of the night lifted all the moon skirt above the horizon. Early in the morning, Jesus there went out to pray in a solitary place. In other words, when it says a solitary place, a place where no one else was. Uh, do you hear the songwriter saying, There are days I'd like to be all alone. But Christ, my Lord. Prayer was an essential part of the life of Christ. Before he said that the multitude of over 5,000 people with five dollars and gold and two fish. The Bible says before he did that, he first prayed. In John chapter 11, before he awakened Lazarus from his death slumber by calling him by his name, he first prayed. In Gethsemane, before he went to experience the crushing crucifixion at Calvary, where he died in ignominious, vicarious, substitutionary, propitiatory, expiatory, exculpatory, executionary, execrationary death on the cross. Uh, in Gethsemane, he first prayed, Father, let this cup pass from me. But not thy will, let thy will be done. While on the cross, three times he prayed. The first word he uttered from the cross was the word of a prayer. Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. The fourth word he uttered on the cross was the word of a prayer. He is not, he not, I mean, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The last word that he uttered on the cross was the word of a prayer. My Father, in thy hand, I commend my spirit. He was a praying man. Uh, when Jesus left this earth, uh, when he ascended to the top of Mount Olivet and began to take a non-stop cloud back to the right hand of the Father, defying the laws of gravity on top of Mount Olivet and was smothered away in the cloud. Uh, he, he ascended back to the right hand for the purpose of a post-resurrection intercession. While he ever lived at the Father's right hand, do what? Pray for you and for me. Right now, Jesus is praying. As we sit here and stand here this morning, Jesus Christ is praying to the Father on my behalf. I say all that to say that Jesus was a praying man. And here he ascends into this mountain for the purpose of prayer. All night long, in prayer. Now listen, brothers and sisters, uh, as I move on hurriedly, this text proves something to me. 
it proves several things to me, and I won't be able to share all the things that it proves to me, but let me share maybe a couple of things that it proves to me. It proves to me, this text does, that God worked the night shift. Yeah, that's what the text proves to me. It proves that God works the night shift. If God didn't work the night shift, Jesus wouldn't have had anybody to pray to. Huh? Yeah, his, his prayer was going somewhere. The text says they did it all night long. So in all the end of prayer, all night long, there had to be somebody up all night long to hear his prayer. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And since Jesus did what God in the flesh, uh, this is going to be a little tricky theologically here. It was God praying to himself. Huh? And, and, and he did it all night long. Now, now let's, 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 let's think earthly one minute here. Establishment. Many businesses have night shifts. Huh? Yeah, they have night shifts in order what? To serve the people better, huh? Yes, they have night shift for availability. Yeah, establishments have night shift for service. Establishments sometimes have night shifts for emergency. There are times when you and I go to establishments looking for availability. Sometimes everybody else is closed. But I'm going to this particular business because I know they're open and everybody else is closed. Let me share something with you this day. Tell us, never close. Huh? And guess what? Tell us is available for all emergencies. That's one thing I love about heaven. Every situation, every circumstance, no matter where it occurs, Heaven is open for business. Yeah. Huh? You, you know that to be a true fact here this morning. I like the way the psalmist put it in the 123rd Psalm. This is what the psalmist says about God. He neither slumber nor sleep. Now, I like, I like to say that he neither slumber nor He never even takes a whip. Uh, anthropomorphically speaking, he never bats his eye in sleep. His eye is never shut. Uh, you know, he never gets time. Uh, he never needs a rest. And think about that, y'all. The God of eternity, from everlasting to everlasting, all day long, ever since creation. And let me also say before creation. Amen. I heard I heard somebody say one day, he has not slept a day since creation. That may sound good, but let me, let me say this. He never slept before creation. He never gets tired. He never needs a rest. Now you and I, we are different. Because we are frail creatures of the moment. And we are we are finite. God is infinite. We are we have restrictions. You and I live within the circumscriptions of the flesh. Yeah. And because we live in the circumscription of the flesh, we get time. As a matter of fact, in case you don't know it, your body is on a clock. Oh, yes, it is. I believe they call it the circadian rhythm. Uh, your body adjusts to the light and to the dark. Uh, that's why uh, at night you get tired because that rhythm sets in. Your body automatically gets tired in the darkness. Uh, and, then, and then you wake up in the night. And, and, and that's why blind people have a problem sleeping. Because, because what they can't see. And, and they can't differentiate between the darkness and the light. They have what is called non circadian rhythm. Their body has a problem with that biological clock. But here is God. Amen. God does not have a rhythm. 
no, no. He doesn't have a sleep time and a waking time. God is always awake. Even at night, he's awake. I know that's right. So guess what? Whenever I need him, I can call him. And I'm certain that some way, somehow, an answer is going to come. Now, 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 can I say God works the night shift? Yes, he works the PM shift. Uh, yes, he works the PM Look, he set up the shift. Uh, he's in charge. God is the one who set the day shift and the night shift. Somebody better read the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. It says he called the night day and he called the darkness night. Read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. It says he divided the day from the night. Now, he said, you know what that tells me? He's in charge. He's in charge of the day shift. And he's in charge of the night shift. Uh-huh. And you know what I love about God? Sometimes the manager goes home and leaves the night shift for somebody else. So what I love about God, he manages all the time. I know I'm right here this morning. He's in charge. He's present in all of the shift. So guess what? I, I discovered that even in the night shift, he gives bedside service in the night shift. I want to read Genesis chapter 28. The Bible talks about Jacob. Jacob found out that he just bedside uh, in the night shift. Uh, I stayed at a couple of fancy hotels like right young. And I, I, I left my room and came back for the night and discovered that there was some chocolate on my bed. And the bed had been turned back. You know what that let me know? Somebody in that hotel was working the night shift. Jacob found out he was trying to head back. Come out of Genesis chapter 28. Jacob ran away from home. He had trouble at home. He had to run away from home. He thought wanted to kill him. Jacob and his mama tricked the old man. They had to get him out of the house. Uh, and when they got him out of the house, he was running like a fugitive. And as he ran like a fugitive, he came to a place called Lou. And when he came to that place, guess what? His circadian rhythm kicked in. It was nighttime. He got sleepy. And the Bible says he found a stone. And made the stone his pillow. Laid his head on the pillow and went to sleep. Jacob went to sleep, but God was still awake. And while he was sleeping, he had a dream. His heaven opened up. A ladder came down. And he saw an angel ascending and descending. Huh? And God talked to Jacob in his sleep. God was still awake. And so Jacob's own word, you say. The promise that I made to your father, Abraham, and the Isaac I'm making to you. I'm going to keep you and let you inherit this land. When Jacob woke up, Jacob said, hey, this stuff. Yeah. Wow. The whole of the was in this place. Yeah. And I knew it now. Yeah. yeah, this must be the house of God. Yeah. Jacob discovered on that occasion that he worked the night shift. Uh, Bedside service. I'll tell you what. Uh, Israel discovered that he gives angelic service. On the night shift. Read Exodus chapter 12. The Bible says the devil's angel by the orders of God rolled into Egypt. And guess what? It was that night. Killing the first bone of every house that did not have. 